everybody, this is Beetle5 coming out to another one of my reaction videos. I have with me the Ginger here. Hello, everyone. And today we will be reacting to the death battle between Smokey the Bear and McGruff the Crime Dog. Now, this is most likely another Deadpool Pinkie Pie fight. In my opinion. This is most definitely... Yeah. But if it's an actual fight we're looking at, I guess I have to go with, like, like a physical fight. I have to go with Smokey because generally I think a bear is stronger than a dog. Oh, yeah. So... I don't know. I have no idea what this battle could be, so let's just get right to it. All right, what number you said you were at? Uh, 31. 31, okay. All right. Okay, we're going to start in 3, 2, 1, go. When it comes to public service, two animals have gone far beyond the call of duty. They're known throughout the world as the symbols of safety. So let's make them fight to the death. Smokey <laughs> Bear, the firefighting mascot of forest safety. And McGruff the crime dog, taking a bite out of crime wherever he goes. He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a Well, death. shit, wow. this is it? It's like a legit animation they made. That's pretty In cool. 1944, America's forests faced an ever-increasing threat. With nearly 16 million men battling Nazis overseas, <laughs> little manpower <laughs> remained to combat the spread of forest fires. Every year, 30 million acres of trees would go up in smoke. Damn, that's even more trees than Snoop Dogg can burn. Oh, <laughs> needed a new hero, someone who could prevent these disastrous blazes from occurring in the first place. And then along came a lovable cartoon bear named Smokey. So remember, oh, only shit. you can prevent forest fires. As a mascot, Smokey Bear did what he could to inspire the American people. He even partnered with Bambi to teach the ways of fire <laughs> safety. Wow. However, Smokey was That's still weird. merely a dream, a figment of imagination, until one fateful day in the Capitan Mountains of New Mexico. What do you know? A forest fire broke out. The mountain trees were annihilated in a blaze so intense the 30 firefighters called to action were almost incinerated. Thousands of forest critters either fled or died. All but one. Atop a smoldering tree clung a lone survivor, a small black bear cub. His paws burnt, his family lost to the flames. So after firefighters rescued him, there was only oh, one shit, they actually that rescued a bear. Smokey. That's pretty freaking cool. Well, first they named him Hotfoot Teddy, but they couldn't waste <laughs> such a great PR opportunity. Adopted <laughs> into the National Zoo at Washington, D.C. Married to Goldie Smoke Bear? became the living symbol of fire prevention. Oh, they even goodness. made an animated short of his new official origin story, and it's pretty horrifying, actually. The public adored young Smokey. He received so much fan mail, he had to get his own zip code. And <laughs> since then, Smokey has successfully helped prevent forest fires and promote fire safety for over 70 years. And boy, oh God. boy, has he done a good job. Drown your campfires with water. Make sure it's totally wet. Then stir and drown again. Indeed, in just the first 20 years, annual forest fire damage dropped over 80%. Yeah, thanks to Smokey's advice, I've never started a forest fire in my entire life. I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've had plenty of opportunities. Well, I'm impressed. I didn't think you took anybody's advice so seriously. Why wouldn't I take Smokey's? This guy started a fire safety club, picked up ventriloquism, and even taught the Adams family to put out fires. I remember you know, that! The people who yeah. love pain and things that are generally bad for I you. love Adams He's family. He's befriended the creatures of the forest, much like a Disney princess, and even infiltrated Disney itself to teach their characters about fire safety. <laughs> also, unlike most mascots at the time, he successfully protected his dignity through the toughest social experience in recent history. The 90s. <laughs> the forest to protect the oh trees. my Don't fucking god. This is a smoke. We agreed you'd talk to kids in their language. I know, but I'll just give it to them straight. Oh, and in case you forgot, <laughs> he's also a goddamn bear. <laughs> An American black bear, to be precise. Yeah, he's The largest brown. black bears are over seven feet tall and exceed 800 pounds, which Shit. seems to match Smokey's own size. Smokey's got plenty to fight with, like his razor sharp claws, his trusty uh, shovel, and enough muscle to rip your arm off Chewbacca <laughs> style. And then you have to worry about fighting a bear that's armed. Is that a pun? Oh my god. It wasn't even bear related. Wiz, you can't even bear the amount of puns I've got. <laughs> what have you got? As if. Unlike Boomstick, Smokey isn't one to just do the bear minimum. Uh, in uh, fact, uh, bears uh, in general are quite durable creatures oh thanks god. to their stout anatomy. 
including a skeleton so stable it endures long hibernation without withering. You better believe Smokey is Holy strong fuck. too. Okay. Please Bears stop. his size can break trees and flip over boulders weighing more than 350 pounds. When he was just a cub, Smokey even smashed this shitty little house to bits. Huh. He's surprisingly stealthy, able to sneak up on people in broad daylight with barely a sound. Also, black bears can run a up to 30 miles per hour. Yeah. That's what makes the bear cavalry so dangerous. Oh my god! Aside from that, he's accomplished many unbelievable feats Stop! that are safe, like manipulating time. And also what? when he disguised himself as a woman without bearing any resemblance what? to his real body. Uh, Boomstick, fuck? why don't you introduce his greatest feat with your baritone voice? Holy Prepare yourself because Smokey can magically grow so large he's bigger than Godzilla. Look at the size of him! All just to emphasize a point. Much like how I'm owning this unbearable pun war. Oh, oh I'm still going! I hope you brought some sort of non-bearishable snack <laughs> because I can do this all day. You're gonna be so embarrassed when you lose. No, what no, no, the that'll fuck never was happen that? when it's me versus you. <laughs> Ha! You missed a bear pun! You're out! Ursus is Latin for bear, moron. <laughs> uh, damn it! You know Latin's my weakness! If only I was a bear, then my only weakness would be bear traps, bear repellent, and bear mace. You know, shit that people had to make to stop bears since they're so unstoppable. There are some techniques to increase your chances oh of surviving oh a bear attack. God. Some say you can punch your arm down their throat to induce uncontrollable vomiting. Although I wouldn't recommend that because you're definitely going to lose your arm. And it's gross. Oh Honestly, God. all you can really do is make yourself look as large and intimidating as possible. Now I know a foolproof way to escape a bear. You just gotta be faster than the guy next to you. Well, it's a good thing Smokey chose a life of education and isn't chasing people down. The last thing you want after you is an eight foot tall bear with a giant shovel and a grudge. Only you can prevent forest fires. Smoking the Holy no. shit! I gotta get back to the forest. How is this a fight? Whose idea was this? Let me take you on a trip back to the late 1970s, also oh. known as the feel good decade. No. A time where individualism and personal liberation took center stage. But not everybody took that as a sign of peace. Killer clowns! Yeah, domestic crime was getting bad. Like, really bad. Killer kitties! <laughs> At the turn of the decade, the American people made a hero to save them from themselves. A dog in a trench coat. This canine began his campaign modestly enough, but I'm not gonna he lie, needed I've never a heard of this dude until After now. eight months of polling, he was given yeah, a proof along with an unforgettable slogan. Take a bite out of crime. McGruff the Crime Dog. Focused and determined to make that bite count, McGruff hit the streets hard and fast. In just a year, more than 50% of Americans had seen at least one McGruff advertisement. It's because teenagers are the victims of over 2,000 violent crimes by strangers every day. You can help stop it. That's because he was willing to get his Holy job shit, done Holy shit, is that DJ from Full House? Even if it meant ultimate yeah. embarrassment. I love that show! Commercials, cartoons, comic books, video games, musicals. Video games. He even released his own anti-drug album with such classic singles <laughs> as Crack and cocaine. Cause nobody's needing that crack and cocaine. Making a mess of your mind. <laughs> and inhalants. You'll be suffering pain. Cause inhalants kill. Ginger, yeah, this is a thing! Really? really <laughs> what the fuck? As McGruff's plan generally targeted children rather than current criminals, it required patience and time. But it worked. Over the next few decades, crime dropped exponentially. The next generation of America was smarter and safer. Now, some of you are probably thinking, hey, you can't prove McGruff was responsible for all of that. And I say to you, can you prove he wasn't? Regardless, McGruff certainly had a massive impact, leading the charge against crime. I mean, that's seriously impressive, considering all my dog does is sit around licking his balls. That's McGruff's nice. not just any dog, he's a six foot tall bipedal bloodhound. A dog breed known for their excellent sense of smell, an extremely powerful bite, and floppy adorable ears. Scaling yes. into your average bloodhound, McGruff can likely run okay, so both of these miles dudes per hour, time, jump 10 apparently. feet high, and bite yeah. with enough pressure to break bones. And unlike my dog, McGruff wears a cool trench coat, which not only protects him from the rain and cold, but gives off a neat detective vibe. 
However, unlike Thailand's Air Chief Marshal, Mr. Fufu, Rest in peace, buddy. What? True story, McGruff doesn't appear to hold an official police rank. He calls himself a pretective, which is just as fake as it sounds. Oh, wait. Uh, if a crime had happened yet, then how does he know to stop it? That's like some minority report shit. He possesses a certain set of skills to do so. He has a keen eye for details and context clues. He's exceptional at analyzing and predicting potential crimes in progress. Huh. So he can predict what's gonna happen with a few context clues, but that doesn't mean much if he can't stop a mugging or whatever. Luckily, McGruff has plenty of tools and talents. When someone's in trouble, McGruff's circle of respect creates a force field. Circle which of respect? Which is apparently the perfect defense against bullies. While huh. he's not an official member of the police force, he's been hanging around officers for decades. So it's not unreasonable to believe he's picked up some police An combat training. An video editor. Being your own dog has its perks. For example, McGruff's car isn't a standard beat-up police cruiser. It's wow, a monster that's truck. Cool. This bad mamma jamma is based on a 2010 Ford Super Duty with Holy 540 crap. cubic inches of gas-guzzling badassery. Definitely an upgrade over his original 96 model. Though I'm not sure what this has to do with preventing crime. Screw preventing crime! <laughs> this beautiful beast prevents all kinds of other stuff, <laughs> like boredom, being a little <laughs> sissy, and small European cars from going unsmashed. That's <laughs> enough for me. Ironically, despite his skills and claim to stop crimes before they happen, he's more of a counselor than a protector, and doesn't actually step in all that often. No, but he doesn't need to when he can freeze time! Ah uh, yes, McGruff is famous for pausing time and breaking the fourth wall oh, to discuss shit. an ongoing potential crime. Unfortunately, while pausing time, McGruff does not seem capable of interacting with the world around him. Ah, uh, that's Jenny, but that's not Jenny's dad. If she gets into that car, that may be the last time you'll see Jenny. He doesn't well, even bother saving up at Jenny all. from her kidnapper. <laughs> Which means he was right. That was the last time we saw Jenny. What? Still, McGruff's campaign has been wildly victorious. It's safe to say he succeeded in taking a bite out of crime. Oh my god, we didn't even mention the reality flipping switch he has in his office. What the hell is up with that thing? Oh. I'm McGruff the Crime Dog, and I'm here to help take a bite out of crime. <laughs> all right, wow, this is extremely set. bizarre. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, I've got a public service announcement for you. It's about food. Okay, well, they talk about Blue Apron. I don't fucking know. I mean... <laughs> He can, uh, what McGruff can really do anything in time stopping. Yeah, I said, so. like, I, I, I don't recall if they said that Smokey could do anything in time stop either, but they can both stop time to talk to us, I guess. Yeah. So there's gonna be a bunch of fourth wall break. Oh, God. Bears are typically stronger than dogs, like yeah. I said before. But McGruff can now play. McGruff does have so. a few skills. Smokey has a shovel. How is this even a fight? I'm <laughs> I don't. just gonna say Smokey. I, I guess they'll say Smokey too then. I don't I, I don't really don't think it matters because I have a feeling they're not really gonna kill each other, so <laughs> Yeah. God. They're gonna they're gonna double up team. I gotta know, did somebody really request this or is this something that, that fucking screw attack felt they needed to do? I, I, I have a feeling they, they kinda edged that on. I bet they wanted to do this. Nah, which is fine I guess, but I mean <laughs> I gotta go watch that nineties commercial now. Oh god, which one? Smokey or McGraw? Smokey the Bear. Oh, uh, yes. Well, I've seen Smokey on TV before, oh, yeah. growing up as a kid. I've never seen McGruff on TV, so I had no clue who this dude was. Oh, we gotta listen to the McGruff soundtrack. Yeah, oh, <laughs> fuck no. Never in my life. <laughs> Alright, here we go. <laughs> I do like that they animated the whole sequence just oh, for yes. this. Remember, kids, fire is a dangerous tool which should never be left unattended. Well, time to go. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh boy. Only you could have prevented that forest fire, <laughs> fool. Remember, this is fucking Christopher Savage voice of Smokey. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> You should learn to respect your surroundings. I'll show you respect. Oh, oh the circle of respect. <laughs> oh boy. Oh no. Oh. 
Oh no. What? Remember, kids, if you're about to be mauled by a bear. <laughs> 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 Stupid dog. <laughs> you made me look bad. Oh shit, you guys must have fucked. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh, he's getting big. He's growing big. <laughs> Not even you can prevent this. <laughs> Remember, kids. Remember me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Well, that's it then. Oh, look at that, he cleans the fire. KO! Yeah. Okay Looks then! Like rough had a rough time out there. Smokey was clearly the stronger well, combatant you're right. thanks to... Well, thanks to being a giant bear, really. McRuff that wasn't it. totally outclassed. His greater speed and smaller size made the battle quite tedious for Smokey. But that's about it. Yeah, he couldn't compete with Smokey in anything else. It's like my grandpappy always said, why have a guard dog when you can get a guard bear? But what truly mattered in this battle were their unique abilities, and in that, McGruff didn't stand a chance. When McGruff paused time, he couldn't affect the world around him, okay. while Smokey has shown that he can. Oh, okay. And really, what are you gonna do against a bear that can be the have to size of a mountain? Though. So, bear beats dog, Smokey's powers were superior, and ultimately Smokey had far more options to take McGruff down for good. Smokey was just more than McGruff could bear. <laughs> oh, oh no! Bear <laughs> Suck it, Wiz! Uh, the winner is Smokey Bear. Well, shit, that Stick was a real battle. Stick around, we're about to announce the combats for the next weird. death battle. And if you want to watch exclusive yeah. commentary Not on this, that was kind of funny. Go watch over there yeah. and start a first membership yeah. trial. All right, who we got? Thor? Thor? And Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Ooh. Well, I'd object because uh, Thor already fought. Only you can prevent forest fires. Click the link below and help save lives. Thank you, Smokey. But uh, oh. as I was saying, fucking Raiden. Thor already, Thor already fought Raiden from yeah. Mortal Kombat, and I think yeah. I think Thor won, but I'm not sure. But anyways, I guess that'll be fun. Not really sure what the comparison is between Thor and Wonder Woman. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they're both olden times. Oh, I guess. Greek versus uh, Norse. Wonder Woman's Greek. Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay. Well, anyways, that was as weird and funny as I thought it would be. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave a comment for the us react to in the future. And I will see you guys next time. Laters. Later.